Hello everybody! It's been a really really long time since I last posted a video with one of my tutorials and today what I'm going to do is I will process one of my city, urban, street, whatever shots. Um, I just want to show you how I achieve the look because that's one of the most things people ask me. How are you doing this with the colors and how are you going for this washed out look with with the lights and um, yeah just trying to create this now from scratch with a photo I have no clue where this is going um, a long time ago I already processed this photo but I haven't touched it so let's see where this is leading and um, this shot has been taken in uh, Singapore a very famous um, uh, bridge it's in the bay and uh, at the left side you have the gardens by the bay but I concentrated on this um, finance skyline that's what they call it finance district and to be honest the shot is uh, from a quality perspective not very good um, uh, because there was a lot of um, how, how you call it humidity and this is leading to uh, washed out lights so you can see it here we have this one let me just go to the let me just reset it so and there you can see it. Um, uh, first of all, I have not done any any bracketing, and you can see that the lights are some kind of uh, washed out due to the humidity. And there are also some. You can see it here. There's some spots on on the lens. Uh, to be honest, uh, this shot was taken I think four years ago, and I started with photography. And today I would take it a little bit differently, but nevertheless, I like the shot and I think we can achieve a lot of stuff. And yeah, let's just start. Um, so the first thing I will do is um, increase the contrast and um, I'm not going to decrease the lights completely. I will show you why. If I go to um, pulling the lights down, what you can see is you get something like this. And there you can see um, it's... I call it it's an onion because what you see here is that the light in the middle is really really um, bright and then you have this this ring outside and this looks like crap. Um, you can avoid this by doing bracketing and going really for an underexposure to HDR and then um, getting back the details in post but as said I have not done any bracketing so what I will do is I will go for burnt out lights but then really consistent so you can see here let's just put the lights that you don't see the onions and then you can see it here 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 there so i think the best is just to keep the lights as it is i think the the camera has chosen the best the best exposure then uh let's just go here increasing the the shadows we'll we will um, bring them down later on by underexposing, but there you can see we have here the dust. So then I uh, will go for split toning, more into the blue, then sharpening. Uh, let's just look if I let's concentrate on the skyline here and on the foreground. So keep Alt, go for masking. So then we will activate this. Then let's see what the auto leveling will bring us. I don't like it. So what we will do now is we will work with our own lines. So this is pretty easy. You get this, this tool so you can mark the, the buildings. And then you can just draw a line how you think it would fit. So we take this one and then we go for one at uh, let's just choose this one here. So, like this, and then go out. You can see it looks a little bit better. So, you can even create more lines. So, we have one here and one there. So, normally you can also go for the, for the horizon, but in our case, we will try to get back more increase like this yes and I think one last one here 
Yeah, didn't change much. Yeah, but at least now the buildings are aligned. That's fine. Don't use any vignette. And that's it for the first thing. So now we get to the magic. These are the color curves that I once bought from the VSCO package emulating analog films. And what I like most in dark situations is there's a, a color gradient that's, or a, not a gradient, but a color curve that's called Kodak Ektachrome. It's based on the very old analog film um, like this. So you can see it's getting more into the blue in the shadows. But to show you what it's doing, it's just pulling down the reds in the in this part, then we go for the greens and for the for the blue. And there you can see the blues are increased in the darker parts of the pictures, and that's why it's getting like this. So you can you can just do this on your own. I mean, you do not have to to, to get the color curve as you can see here. You just go for the red, then you pull down a little bit the the middle reds of the of the photo. Then you go to the green, then you pull down the green a little bit, and the blue you can push it a little bit to the just a little bit here. You can see what's happening. So if I go for this, the, the photo is getting bluish in the darker parts. And that's how you can achieve the result. I think for the beginning you should just go for the for the blue the blue color and just drag it a little bit push it a little bit and then you can see that darker parts are getting more blue so i'm always trying to achieve some kind of a cinematic look so cinematic means um you have a lot of this orange teal look um, i'm not going completely into teal I, but i like the blue thing and so we what we would do is we emphasize this by going for a split toning in the shadows and then even go in the color curve a little bit more I think if you can, if you do it really completely right, you can just leave the split toning and just work in in, in this thing. But I'm just used to do it like this, um, and it works. So then uh, let's see what we will do next. So we have this thing. So let, let's just take care of the dust. So what we can do here is um, we can just um gosh get to this one just click it there's another one big one no we will we won't see the spots that much because I will track down the the shadows and will underexpose it so should not be a problem anymore just going through the picture there's another one a small one yeah like there's also a tool um where, where it shows you the dust but pff, not sure why it's not showing up normally it's down there pff, I don't care so then uh, let's choose. I'm shooting with the uh, with the Fuji, and what I like, what I really love with the Fuji, or I'm not shooting with the Fuji right now, but I have shot with the Fuji, and what I love is the classic chrome camera because it's giving you really, really lovely colors here. So you can see it, but I think you can just let's just use Adobe Landscape because a lot of people do not have the classic Chrome emulation and we try to to get the look just by the standard things that's that Lightroom is offering. So okay now what we will do is we will track down the overall exposure because we will bring the details back later. So first thing is we will choose the radian radial filter we use an inversion and then what I like is I like this washed out light so we will go for pushing the blacks and we will use a little bit of the inverse haze 
um, erasure. So what you can see here is that it's looking a little bit like fog. So for me, this is too much. So let's just drag it a little bit down like this. There was humidity. So for me, it is fine to, to have this look. So now what you can do is, even though we will use a little bit of washed out blacks, I like to get back a little bit of the, of clarity. So I use them vice versa. And then more blacks. And now you can experiment with the colors. So if you like the yellow more, we can go like this. But what I will do is I will just drag down the blue even more to have it like this. I like this. So if you want to go for a cyberpunk look, just just use this. <laughs> you just can't go with the magenta. So now it's too much. Yeah, I just have to experiment. I think this is fine. Yeah, this looks good. Um, let's get a little bit out of Vibrance. This is the Vibrance slider. I'm sorry that I'm using German labels here. Um, I was not prepared and I was in the video <laughs> three minutes um, already and then I recognized that I'm in German. So this is fine. Then what we will do is we will increase the luminance of the yellows because I like the, the bridge color a little bit. So we can just get it a little bit back. Then I will even track further down the, the brightness, the exposure. Then I have to go give it back here. So, and now what you can do is you can use a, a radiant filter. But don't go for black. So just use the the exposure. And I want to emphasize here the way leading into the picture. And so I will increase the structure because clarity and structure is what attracts the, the eye of the viewer. And use a little bit of clarity. So then we can go like this, track the exposure even more. It's fine. So, and what I will do now is I will just go for some washed out, just a little bit washed out lights. That's pretty easy. Just create a radial filter, increase the, the blacks a little bit and negate the dehaze function once again like this here you can see it just by minus three or four and then you can do control alt and then you can just copy it over to the to the others so we will just decrease it a little bit so like this go like hey come on yeah go like that. Oh, come on. This one. Oh, come on. That one. So, and now what you can see here that we have lost here some some labels. So, what you can do to to get it back is we can just go over it. Ah, it's too much. Yeah, that's. That's what I meant with this picture is crappy quality. So you can see here there are the lights. Um, it's just distracting. I will just leave it as it is. I guess no one will will care. So let's look. More blue is not fine. No, it's too much like this so let's see if we can work with the uh, gradient so and then decrease the the orx no let's put it away so what i don't like is it's for my in my opinion this part here is too much so i will try to lower it with the 
gradient going from bottom to top and decrease the exposure because the thing is if it's too bright the the viewer will just be distracted and is looking at this part but what we want to do is he should go for the for this part and then move into the picture to the brighter part and then he sees the skyline so let's see like this so, so this looks really nice my opinion no green is too much let's stay for a little bit of magenta so is this is too bright so with the luminance is pretty nice so with the luminance you can just increase the the brightness of the color you are choosing so you can just click on this small icon here and then keep your then then click on the photo of the color you want to increase and then just Keep it pressed and move the mouse up or down and then you can see that it's just increasing the exposure of the color you have chosen. So like this. Then let's see. We want to avoid the onions. Let's see if we, but we have increased the overall exposure of yellow, so we can now drag the lights a little bit down yeah like this so what i also like is i like these colors here so we will use another radial filter oh, then go like this increase the exposure and clarity like it is but even there I like to have a little bit of pushed blacks because it's reflecting. So let's do it like this one. So and what I also want to do is I want to emphasize the green here, the green part. So drag it down. Increase the structure and clarity a bit more. So and very very feathered and so let's go like this just paint it to the middle And then erase a little bit so you can press O, then you can see the mask. So get it a little bit away. Yeah, here a little bit more. This, let's just come back. Okay. Then another radial filter here, just increasing the green. A little bit washed out. So. Okay. And this is fine. Oh. We have an onion. I hate onions and lights. So it's another one. Let's just do it a little bit brighter. Yeah, it's fine. So let's just see what's this. It's the reflection from the. So now I go over the picture. There you can see it. We have. Some more onions, yeah, but it's not working. So what we will do is to I, I hate this. So I will just create small radiant filters and increase the lights. So I rather have them washed out than going for onions. I hate this. Yeah, 
I just think it's succeed. I think it's not avoidable with some of these, but there you can see it a little bit less. Yeah, I said if you are doing things like this, go for a bracketed version on work than just with the luminances because I have to, to fake a lot of stuff here to get it right. I mean, a lot of people won't recognize, but I can see it. So you have now the stars. So back here, let's just see if I can get them. Yeah. So here too. So and now you, what you can do is you can. Uh, Emphasize the shadows even more. So go for for this, and then what you can do is you can just paint a little bit over the shadows. You do not have to make this complete accurate. Just track them. So you can see it. It's so if it's too much, we can just see it. So just wash a little bit over it. This. So then let's just. What well, that will try it again. Let's just decrease a little bit at the top the color. Yeah, that's fine. So, and this gradient is too much in my opinion. Just to get it a little bit back, that's too much. Like this. So, what can we do? So, if I now choose the, I would now go for the classic chrome look, but you can't because in classic chrome, the colors, um, yeah, we can just desaturate them even more. I like it more, yeah. So, but you can desaturate it like this, but if you want to get back the colors, for example, or have it back more yellow, you can just get them back by saturating exactly the parts you want to have it back, like this, for example. You see, it's coming back, the colors. Yeah, this is that's too much desaturated, so we can just go for that look, and then the yellow. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, I think I would stop processing now and just do something else and go back one hour later, and then I would go for a final result. I don't know if I could should put out the desaturation more or the vibrance. Pens. Hmm. Now we're not just the classic chrome and see if I would like the look here. Get back the, the colors. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. My opinion. I don't like it's too much poppy. Um, it's not not my thing but in my opinion this the the skylines might be even more brighter yeah like this this is cool so let's decrease it yes yeah I think I would now stop and as said would come back one hour later and see if I still like it so let's just look before and after. 
Nope, that's not the before and after. Just a moment. So that's that's also already yeah. There you can see at the left, you can see the, the original, but already the classic Chrome effect applied. So I think, and that's the, the processed one. So it's, yeah, I think get back a little bit. Hmm. As said, I just have to do something else. I can't decide if it's now more bluish or more yellow. That's up to the taste. I mean, it's just <laughs> tracking from from the left to the right and um, deciding what you like more. It's not some academic stuff. If you were going to for realistic, then I think the realistic thing already has been put away. 20 minutes after processing the shot. So. I would go like this. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments. Um, thank you for watching this and I hope um, you learned. My next tutorial will have English labels once again, so sorry for that. Um, Bye-bye.